Got him. Oh, you're little. Oh my goodness. What are you, a little bass? <laughs> All right, first fish of the day is a little bass. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, everybody. I am out on Jeff and Jan's Pond in Jasper County, Iowa. Uh, this, uh, this last Saturday, just a couple of days ago, I buried one of my fishing buddies. Member of my church family. He died by his own hand. Uh, we're going to do some fishing for a while, and then a little bit. I'm going to tell you what my fishing buddy Ryan would say to you today, if he could. Welcome to this edition of Iowa Pan Fishing, everybody. Let's go fishing. Oh my goodness. Little midget bluegill here. Now, now there are there are master angler bluegill in here. Master angler crappie in here. Some very nice bass. Uh, and some tiny bluegill too. <laughs> I'm working uh, with a slip bobber. I've got a 132nd ounce jig head. Uh, for a hook, uh, about two feet beneath the slip bobber. Got a red worm on there right now. Got him. All right, first cast with the worm deeper. Got a fish on. Doesn't feel big. Does not feel like a keeper. What do we got here? Uh, average, average size bluegill. That's not what I'm looking for though. I'm looking for the monsters here in Jeff's Pond. That's what I want. Ooh. Got him. Just another little one. Oh my goodness. All these babies. Where are the monsters? Where are the monsters? <laughs> well, I mean a fish is a fish, right? No matter how small. <laughs> oh, there we go. Got him. Still feels small. Darn. That's a little better. That is a little better. But still not big enough. Got him. Oh, that one feels a little better. 
little bit. Yeah. No. I don't know. Oh, a perch. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Nice one. Nice yellow perch. All right, three species today. Nothing in the bucket yet. Jeff doesn't want me to keep any of the yellow perch. What a beautiful fish though, huh? Isn't that a beautiful fish? Very pretty. Back you go. The bite is so slow this morning. They're just... Got them. What I mean by slow, I mean I'm getting a lot of bites, but the way they're going after the bait is just, oh, look at that little bass. Oh my goodness. Look <laughs> at oh, the little bass. They're just like barely pecking at it. Not one keeper yet. And this is a pond known for its big, beautiful keepers. But all I'm getting right now are little ones. I'm getting lots. Getting a bunch of bites, getting a bunch of fish. Most areas where I'm casting, most depths. But I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Looking for the big bluegill, big crappie. And they are both here. Got him. Oh. Might you be a little better? No. I don't think so. Oh. What? Oh, 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 yeah, you're a keeper. You are a keeper. There we go, finally. All right. Did I find where they're lurking? Give me that. Give me that worm. Still, not the, not one of the really big ones here, but I gotta get something in the bucket. Gotta get something in the bucket. Oh, there we go. There we go. First fish on a jig. Yeah, you feel a little better too. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yellow perch. Nice fish, but I can't keep it. Ooh, another pretty yellow perch. There we go. Back you go, and we're getting hit on the bobber here. Oh, missed him. Well, got most of the worm. <laughs> well, I'm getting fish. I am certainly catching fish, so that's not a bad day. Oh, fish on there. Okay. What is it? Oh, it's a perch. Another nice perch. After catching that little bass first thing this morning, I shared with you that a fishing buddy of mine, a young man by the name of Ryan, recently took his own life. This last weekend, Ryan's family, along with our church family and many of his, his friends and relatives, uh, held his funeral service. Ryan was a husband, he was a father, he was a member of our local church. I knew Ryan for about the last seven years or so. Uh, 
Ryan learned the value of working hard. By his own admission, as a young man, he really didn't value hard work. In fact, he would probably go out of his way to avoid it. But over these last several years, Ryan really did learn the value of working hard, and he did it well. He learned to sacrificially serve others, and he, and he seemed to truly find joy in doing so. Uh, Ryan was the type of man who could have a task set before him, learn what was needed to complete the task, and then tackle it head on. Uh, a, a number of people in the church, myself included, if something broke in our house or we had a question about a car repair, we would oftentimes pick up the phone and call Ryan. And if Ryan didn't have the answer, he was resourceful enough to go find the answer. Ryan was huge in stature, very big man, uh, but he could also be pretty soft of heart. And he was quite a character, loved a good joke. Uh, and Ryan did not want anything to do with fishing. And anytime I brought up the subject to him, uh, asked if he wanted to go fishing or or if he wanted me to clean some fish for him, fillet some fish for him, he would always say the same thing. He would always ask the same question. Is it salmon? <laughs> now Ryan, Ryan well knew that uh, there are no salmon in Iowa. But that was just kind of his uh, joking way of saying, no, nah, Tony, I'm not interested in catching fish, not interested in cleaning fish, not interested in eating fish. But not too long ago, uh, Ryan asked if I would take him and one of his young daughters fishing for her birthday. And uh, took Ryan out to, uh, to a friend's pond, and there he caught his first bass, and it was uh, a nice one. And uh, let's just say he was hooked. And I got to go on a couple of really uh, enjoyable fishing trips with Ryan. Um, uh, before his life came to an end. So when Ryan took his own life, I lost not only a friend, but a fishing buddy. So how Ryan's life ended came as a complete shock to his family, uh, to everyone who knew him, to me. And the aching question in the minds of many of us, maybe even all of us, is why? Why? Now that is likely the piece of the puzzle that was Ryan's life and tragic death that may never be answered. You see, Ryan never spoke of the depth of his despair. He never told anyone. And the responsibility for that rests with Ryan. No, there was no way any of us could have or should have seen this coming. And of course, that's one of the first questions people ask themselves in times like this is, should I have seen it coming? Now Ryan, who professed faith in Jesus Christ, I think if he could say anything to anyone right now, it would be this, don't miss heaven. You see, Ryan now knows perfectly what he professed to believe, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That everyone has broken God's law in thought, word, and or deed, whether it's lying or stealing or hatred or jealousy, selfishness, sexual immorality, coveting, whatever it might be. And everyone will one day stand before God to give an account for his or her life. The Bible says that it's appointed once for a person to die and then the judgment. Every human being, you and me included, are part of the ultimate statistic 10 out of 10 people die. And since everyone uh, in and of themselves is guilty before God, if God gives a person what he or she deserves for his or her sin, and all sin is against God, well, the punishment will be eternity in hell. Yes, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. However, the second half of that verse also says that the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ the Lord. Ryan knew this too. Ryan knew that God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin, Jesus was truly God and truly man, yet without sin. Even though he knew no sin, 
he voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and me and Ryan and everyone else rightly deserves for their sin against God. Three days later, however, Jesus forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. He's alive today and he will return at a time of his Father's choosing. And what God commands of you this day and of every human being is to repent and to believe this gospel, this good news. Turn from your sin, turn to God, and by faith, and by faith alone, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He will forgive your sin. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west, and he'll remember it no more. You'll be reconciled to the God you have spent your life offending by your sin, and God will extend to you the gift of eternal life. Ryan professed this to be true, and he now knows that it is true. Again, that's why if Ryan could say anything to you today, I believe it would be, don't miss heaven. Turn to Christ and live while God has given you time. If you're watching this, listening to this, and you already know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, if you are truly born again, then tell others about him. And if you are struggling with sin in your life, whatever it might be, whether you're a Christian or not, tell somebody. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, run to the only one who can forgive your sin, no matter what it is no matter how dark it may be. What might be a secret to the rest of the world is no secret to Him. Turn to Christ. Put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. He will forgive your sin. And He will reconcile you to Himself. Turn to Christ and live while God has given you time. Well, this is the last fish. A bunch of small ones today. A few bass, a um, few perch, and probably, I don't know, 40, 40 to 50 bluegill. About that size. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me for this special edition of Iowa Pan Fishing, everyone. Until next time, God bless. And let's go fishing.